today I'm going to read a book by Margaret Musgrove and Julia Cairns, and it's the the Spider Weaver, a Legend of the Kente Cloth. And I don't know if anybody knows what Kente Cloth is, but it's a, a very colorful cloth. It looks something like what you see here, or um, you know, you probably what you see here. And it's worn mostly by people who initially was it was meant for royalty and people from Ghana and the Ivory Coast mostly. And uh, and, and, and so, uh, and I have some actual kente cloth at home. Uh, I have a big piece that my father gave to me, handed down to me, a huge piece. Um, and that cloth is actually worn. You wear it, wrap it around you, you wear it. But anyway, that's uh, for a different day. And so the legend of the Kente cloth, the spider weaver. Spider. So, and here in the insert, inside here, it says, it is said that long, long ago, a beautiful spider created a web so intricate that means it was very, very complicated um, and magnificent that the weavers of Ghana still tell the story today. The colorful patterns of this magical web were soon woven into a unique new fabric, kente cloth. This is the legend of that master spider weaver and the remarkable gift she gave to people everywhere. Kente cloth. So the Spider Weaver, Legend of the Kente Cloth by Margaret Musgrove and Julia Cairns. All right. Once long ago in the Ashanti village of Bonwire in the country of Ghana, there lived two expert weavers. One weaver was called Nana Koragu. The other was Nana Ameya. These men wove a simple cloth called Nguyen and Tuma, and everyone from the king of the Ashanti people to the lowliest apprentice wore it. So they used to weave this cloth that everybody wore, these two weavers. Late one night, Koragu and Ameya went into the great Ashanti forest to check their traps for grass cutters. A grass cutter is like a um, grass cutter's animals that they would bring home to roast. A grass cutter is like a, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a, uh, what's the creature that hangs out in the backyard? I've got a couple in my backyard. A groundhog, it's like a groundhog. And a, a, a groundhog actually, boys and girls, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, a woodchuck and a groundhog are the same creature. Check it out, you can, you can, you, 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 you can Google that, kids. Another name for a groundhog is a woodchuck. And they hang out in my backyard. I try to trap them. But anyway, that's a whole different story. But um, they're still there. They're still hanging out. But some people eat that stuff, OK? So a, a, wood, a, a, a grass cutter is like a woodchuck that they would bring home to roast. Yes, they're going to cook it up. Oh, yeah, make some soup out of it. But anyway. <laughs> On this night, they found grass cutters in all three of their traps. The weavers were very thankful. So they got them, see? They got them, three of them, taking them home. Karago and Ameao were returning home when Ameao stopped suddenly. The light from his lantern had fallen on an amazing sight, glowing like moonbeams against the moonlight, the moon night, the midnight sky. Come. Look, my friend, Ameya whispered to Karago, I see a small miracle. Looking at the spider web. Two of them. The small miracle was actually a web, but never before had either of them seen such a wondrous design. Yet it had been woven with a single unbroken thread, a thread that was even finer than a strand of human hair. Let's bring this, tree, 
the treasure home with us to study. Karago whispered to Ameo. Ameo carefully detached the web from where it held fast to a banana tree. But as he did, the web collapsed, sinking to his fingers, sticking to his fingers. Oh, it is ruined, Karago cried. Now, how will we ever learn to weave this beautiful design? Saddened, the weavers walked home. Their discovery was lost forever. Hmm. When the men entered the village at dawn, Amea's wife, Afia, came out to meet them. Afia offered them a calabash filled with a cool water to drink. And a calabash is like a little bowl. It's made from a gourd with cool water to drink. Neither man spoke as he ate. And for this reason, Afia sensed that something was wrong. Please tell me what trou troubles you, she said. It is a beautiful web, her husband answered sadly. When we tried to bring it home from the forest to study, it crumpled in my hands and was ruined. Do you think you can find another one like it? Afia asked quietly. Karago was thoughtful. This web was very different, very special. And no creature ever spins the same web twice. Perhaps what happened was a blessing, Afia suggested gently. Though you cannot find the same web again, perhaps you can find the same weaver. Hmm. All right. And that is what Karago and Amea set out to do. Early the next morning, they eagerly made their way through the bush, past the tall silk cottons and papaya trees. They found the banana tree where they had first seen their extraordinary web. Sure enough, in front of them were the beginnings of a new masterpiece. In no time, a slender black leg, leg emerged from the shadows and rested lightly on the silk threads. Ameo and Karago could see the creature clearly now. The master weaver was a lovely, large, yellow and black spider. I hope it doesn't bite. Um, <laughs> And as soon as they saw the spider, the men felt terrible for wrecking the magnificent web the night before. Now they could see that the spider was the beautiful, that the web was a beautiful spider's home. Longing to take the web home with them, the weavers looked at each other, but neither of them wanted to destroy the spider's home a second time. They were about to leave when the spider looked directly at them and began a weaving dance. Hip, twist, turn, and glide. The spider made her way across the back over the web. She moved like a woman dancing, regal and very graceful. The spider wove on and on into the afternoon, and the weaver stood still in admiration as they watched her. At dusk, the tired but satisfied spider completed her creation. The spider moved sideways to the edge of the web, but before the peering into the shadows, she turned into the direction of Mayo and Carago. In that brief moment, the men were quite certain she smiled at them. Then in the blink of an eye, she was gone. The beautiful spider has shown the weavers how to weave new intricate designs. What a wonderful teacher she had been. What a wonderful, wonderful gift she had given them. With great joy, they returned to their village. In time, the weavers redesigned their looms so they could imitate the spider's weaving dance. At first, they copied the patterns in black and white thread, but soon they dyed their threads in bright colors and developed many new patterns themselves. And they named this new woven cloth Kente Nguyen and Tuma, what today is commonly called Kente cloth. Everyone in the village wanted to wear this new cloth, but at first only the king of the Ashanti people wore it on special occasions. So in the beginning, only the royalty could wear it. As time passed, others were allowed to wear the cloth too. Soon the two weavers were well known across Ghana. And because of the spider's generous gift, they created designs and patterns that are still worn throughout the world today. Look at all that colorful cloth, and it is worn throughout the world today. The end, and it did come from, they say, weavers who had seen. So it's 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 a uh, it's folklore. It's a a tale out there that 
the Kencha cloth design came from spiders weaving it. So there you have it, Kencha cloth. The spider weaver, a legend of Kencha cloth from the Ashanti people of Ghana. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls for listening to this reading and hopefully we'll see you next time. Thank you.